Okay, get it, guys. Uh, welcome to Plus Spec 17 for absolute beginners. Now, guys, learning new things is rewarding. Don't be hard on yourself. You know, you can go back and watch these videos at any time. All right, so we're going to start from absolute scratch. I'm assuming by this time you've in, you've installed SketchUp, uh, and I'm assuming that you've uh, downloaded Plus Spec and loaded Plus Spec. Now, the first thing you'll see uh, on your desktop is you would have an icon now that says SketchUp you can double click that icon. You can also drag that icon down into the taskbar down here and it will always be in the same position every time you open. I'm going to double click the SketchUp icon and the first thing I see is this welcome to SketchUp screen. Now it's important to understand that SketchUp is the program that Plusspec works inside of. So if you don't have SketchUp open you won't be able to use Plusspec. And this is important in this screen because if you choose you really want to choose a template. Now inside, what does a template mean? It basically means every time you start SketchUp up, it's going to come up with a particular style and you can change it later, so don't get too concerned about it. The only real thing you want to look at is that if you're designing in feet and inches, then choose feet and inches. If you're designing and you always write in millimeters, use millimeters. I personally prefer to write in millimeters because it's quicker. Um, uh, or if you like to write in millimeters, you just have to put a decimal point in every time you need to do it. I'm going to choose millimeters and I'm going to start SketchUp up for the first time. Okay, I'm using a laptop at the moment, guys, so you know what? It doesn't load as fast as probably a desktop would do. However, and I'm also recording this as I go, there's a few things that we need to see. So as we've opened up SketchUp here for the first time, you'll notice that if you've loaded Plusspec correctly, you will come up with uh, this welcome screen. And if it's the very first time, you might have already been through this and clicked yes or no here. If you clicked yes, you will notice that it opened up these tabs across the top there, and it might come up and say that, you know, this isn't version. Don't worry about that. It basically, if you're using an older version of SketchUp, it means it will still work. So don't show this message again, that's fine, or just go OK. All right, and this interactive tutorial, when you click it, it will start to talk to you. Now, this will tell you how to go through step-by-step uh, -step how to draw a simple house. You know what, some people love it and some people prefer to do the tutorials. And the tutorials are inside of here. So if you haven't closed this down, beginner is the best place to start for you. I personally recommend um, going through the tutorial first and if you're having troubles it doesn't matter just go back open up SketchUp again and do the beginner tutorials they're very important this they're, they're kind of easy to follow there's a couple simple things that I'm just going to go through that probably aren't as evident as they may need to be by accident you have closed this here you can simply go back to the question mark in the plus big toolbar and click on help and it will come back and if you want to do the tutorial again because you closed it down before, help and support, tutorials, and you look for interactive tutorial, that one there, and it will open up this file that will talk to you again. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've done this or you've closed it or whatever, and I'm going to go back to what would come up after this. So I'm just going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to choose what the normal screen would look like. Now there's a couple of things and regular questions we get. Sometimes by mistake you can also close your toolbar. Now this is the Plusspec tool set and this is where all the magic happens. This is what makes SketchUp easy to use, easier to design with uh, and allows you to estimate and add all the fantastic things you've probably seen in our videos. You can do some really powerful things. Uh, we have a client of ours that's doing a 70 million job in Plusspec now, 70 million dollars. He's just finished a 25 million dollar project. However, Plusspec was specifically designed for residential construction. This guy did do it first go with a $25 million project, but he's very unusual. It doesn't matter if it takes time to learn things. You know what? This can be fun if you give it the chance. Now I'm going to show you what happens if by accident you close this toolbar. Okay. Where do I go to get it? Close this as well. I'm missing my toolbar. Well, here it is. It's pretty easy. If you go to View on Windows and you go to Toolbars, and if you scroll down, you'll see Plusspec 17 Pro or Plusspec. Okay, you might be using different versions. Okay, close. And you'll notice that the toolbar came up. If you can't find it, click it a couple of times. It'll flash. Okay, you can dock this toolbar. 
I'm going to leave it open here but docking the toolbar means I could drag it up to the top here or I could put it over to the side over here wherever you feel most comfortable with this is, as I said is the plus spec toolbar these are SketchUp tools now we do use a combination of SketchUp tools in some instances and I'm going to explain a little bit about that you'll also notice and something I've heard from uh, clients before is when they actually click help up here they're getting SketchUp help not plus spec help and that kind of makes sense if you remember that the top toolbar is SketchUp and this toolbar is plus spec basically if you click the question mark here it will come up with tutorials and you can go through help and support tutorials and so on there's a whole heap of information there however these tutorials here are very advantageous if you have two screens watch them while you're drawing but on top of that inside of every tool you will actually have a question mark inside of it so I've clicked the wall tool I'm going to click wall and this little dialog is opened here and you'll notice that we have a orange uh, question mark there and you also in plus 17 have access to the forum so you can go and ask questions there as well if you hover over these orange signs on the left it'll actually show you uh, an image of the tool now I'm purposely using this mouse that you can see on the screen here so you can see when I'm clicking a button and when I'm scrolling so it just makes it easy to understand the thing that I recommend the most and if you don't have it now you'll notice that this button is a three button mouse so I have left I have right and I have scroll this is very important to have a three button mouse that's comfortable you don't have to spend a fortune I'm just using a, a Logitech mouse and to navigate uh, in 3D you need a three button mouse you might also notice that at the moment it looks like it's trying to draw something escape is your best friend and if I push escape you'll notice that it's coming up on my keyboard so you can see which buttons I'm clicking when I click them escape and spacebar are really the best tools that you use all the time get used to using those we'll talk about keyboard shortcuts in another tutorial however escape and spacebar spacebar basically takes you back to scratch so it's like a select so if I click something it's selecting it if I had geometry over here I can select it and that's what we do okay so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start to draw and there's a couple of reasons I don't really want to get into drawing because you're going to learn it into the next tutorials however I've left click uh, which is point and click it's not click and drag and when I point and click which basically means I hit and let go of the button I now have my wall tool and all of this information is explained in future videos I'm just going to go and start to draw I can click submit if I want to and start to draw now I'm in 3D space this little man over here is just giving me a, he's there so that we can see scale because I can see if I drew out here I draw a massive building you see so it's just giving me an indication of scale you don't have to use him and I usually delete him once I've set up a template which is also in another video okay I drew a huge wall there and as I said that little man just tells us gives us an indication of scale now I'm going to undo that if you ever do something that you don't like uh, control Z will undo it okay so I might have wanted to draw a smaller, smaller building you'll get into sizes and everything as we get into the tutorials a little bit further but this is just about teaching you now if you look at my mouse you can see what I'm doing okay so I actually pushed my center button mouse down and it allows me to navigate okay if I push my center button and shift it allows me to pan there is one little trick but some people have troubles with it depends on how your fingers are like if I let go of shift and I push my left button at the same time I can also pan. Once you get better at SketchUp and Plusbeck, this is a very fast way to draw. You can draw on your lap. I'm going to quickly go back to the wall tool there. I'm going to explain something for you. Okay, so I've gone to wall tool and then wall tool again. I'm going to assume that everything inside of my dialog is correct. So I'm going to go submit. Now here's something that I've had uh, a few people tell me uh, that were new 
to Plusbeg that they didn't understand. And what they were doing was, if you watch my mouse button, they were pushing and holding the mouse as they went. And the problem is, is it's not finishing a draw. So basically, it isn't a push and drag move. It's actually, uh, go escape, click once, move it to where you want to. You can type in a dimension now if you want to. Click once, so click and release. Move the mouse to where you want it to go. Click and release. Move the mouse to where you want to go. If I want this wall to line up with this wall, and it's in a later tutorial, push shift and click once and release and click once and release and I created a loop. If your walls didn't join up it just basically means that you didn't zoom in properly. I'm going to give you another example. Click once and release click, click, click. Now the key to 3D is zooming in its accuracy it looks like I'm about to join up there, but I'm not going to. You see, when I got to there, it actually joined that line up for me. If I clicked here, it still wants to keep drawing. If I made a mistake, I could push delete and go back. It will allow me to find my spot. But if I was here and I went, you know what, I expected it to join my walls, it's only because I didn't spend the time to zoom in. It's really important to zoom in, and when you're zooming in, you should place your mouse where you want to zoom in. Okay? Right. If I got it wrong and I went to say here and double clicked it, you'll notice that my walls didn't join up. Now, when you're learning, the most important thing is getting a loop. It doesn't matter what you draw, just mess around with it. If you make a mistake, Control Z will undo it. Control Z will undo the last move as well. Scratch. Okay, I'm still drawing here. Notice that it's it's still wanting to draw the wall, and sometimes you can find that frustrating. You go, I don't want to draw a wall now. All the key is is select, which is your spacebar, and now all of a sudden I'm selecting things again. So if I went back and drew my wall one more time, submit, and I'm just going to draw one wall here. Now to draw one wall without creating a loop, I would double click. Now I'm still, the computer still thinks I want to draw more walls here. You see my mouse pointer is white, that little arrow is white. However, if I went to here, it would now select things, you see. So, get used to doing that guys, it's a big help. Okay, I hope that helps with these things. It's important, you can watch this video back several times to get the hang of it. And the main purpose of the video is to understand the difference between SketchUp tools and plus spec tools. Now, inside of these tools, remember that no matter which one you click, you will find that you have a little help button at the top, and that will take you to YouTube, and you can watch those videos. There's, there's hundreds of videos uh, that you can watch. And one other thing too, guys, is that over the left, you might see a default tray, and inside of here, we have a whole heap more SketchUp things. Now, these do integrate with what Pluspec's doing. We have layers and a whole heap of different things. You can pin this if you want to. Okay. There's a lot of things that can be done with this. It can change styles, which is the way that it looks. So you can make your drawings look funky. However, the main reason for this video is so that you can understand the difference between the tools. Like the style you've chosen. You can just close down SketchUp and go back to where you wanted to, or you can just choose a different style inside of here. You can have sky, you can have a black and white, you can have it look like CAD, you can have it see through, you can have a whole heap of different things. There's one last thing I want to touch on, guys, is tools and toolbars. As I said before, you can dock your tools. Make it so that this is nice and easy to find, because you'll find that Plusspec saves you hours, if not days, of time in a project. However, I still use a lot of SketchUp tools. So I'm going to go through the most important SketchUp tools that I use, and you might just want to add these as you go. So I'm going back to View, Toolbars, and toggle these on and off. I usually use Large Tool Set, and I always dock it to the left. It gives me a little bit more screen space. Okay, and I also like to use Views, because what Views does is it allows you to Navigate without learning to use the mouse button. 
too much. So for instance, if I want to look at this top down, I'll click this one, I'll show you that in a second. Close that. Now I'm looking at the model top down, I'm looking at it from a side, a front, the other side. There's also one more section. You can also right click the, the, the mouse button up here and you can also access these tools here. Section tool, I'm going to dock it here as well. That allows me to cut a section through a drawing. You can learn more about that and also you might, another important resource for learning to use SketchUp is sketchucation.com. I've taught hundreds of people to use SketchUp and Pluspec and the most common thing I hear from anybody or the most common problem I see is navigation. So get used to zooming in, get used to figuring out what your mouse does. I've done several videos on navigation and they're really important to learn how to use Pluspec well. One last thing guys, I'm going to put a window in this wall. I don't even know what type of brick we're using here, I've just left it at, at something that was selected previously. Pluspec will remember materials it did last time. I've drawn a window in there. Now, I use the Pluspec tools to draw the window. If I use the SketchUp tools to edit this wall, there'll be a problem. This tool over here is called the Move tool, and it's fantastic when you know what it does. However, the most important thing to remember is that Pluspec works with Pluspec tools. So I'm going to show you a common mistake that I've seen from new users that aren't familiar with SketchUp. So I can move a wall. However, that's not the way you should move a wall. I guess considering the way you would build it would be the way you would actually do it. Um, now, to scale a wall, you might say I want to make this wall bigger. There's a scale tool in SketchUp as well, but it doesn't play nicely with Pluspec. See what happened? The window doesn't work the way I need it to be. Yes, the wall got bigger, but it's not the way it should have been done. Control Z, if you ever come across that, Control Z, undo it, spacebar. If you want to mess with the wall or change a wall around, you'll notice that these other tools are inside of here. This one will split a wall, this one will allow you to move walls. So, notice I've got two little blue dots here. This is explained in detail in another uh, tutorial, so that's inside of your wall tool. Okay. So when you want to move something that's made with Pluspec, use the wall tool if you want to move a wall, if you want to mess with the roof, use the roof tool. But by all means, definitely use this help button at the top here, help and support, tutorials, and there's a whole heap of things inside of here. Wall tools, if you're looking for wall tools, window and door tools, post and column tools, everything that you require to use is inside of here. If you're anything like me, I go to Ikea, I buy a chair, I throw the instructions in the bin, I have one bolt left and then I kick myself for not reading the instructions. It's more important with Pluspec to do the instructions. It's free tutorials. They save you thousands of dollars in training. Do them, see how you go, get a model together and if you do need to do some training, contact the office and we'll do some one-on-one -on -one training with you. Thanks guys, all the best. I look forward to seeing some cool models. Bye for now.